that in mind too as well also our new year's eve service we like to call it watch night service as we bring in the new year um, that will take place of course on new year's eve on december the 31st at 10 p.m and then also um don't forget about our christmas drama everybody say christmas drama Christmas drama also on December the 22nd. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful night of, of, of presentation of gifts and just going to be a wonderful time of just blessing God. All right. Well, listen, um, I w I'm ready for the word of God. I'm going to ask you guys to get out your Bibles. Isaiah chapter 43. I'm going to go ahead and switch to this lapel mic. Um, Brother Dre. Also on next week, I'm I'm. I'm kind of dual on, on this next thing um, to bring up is next Sunday we're going to be um, celebrating the Richards and it is going to be a day that we're going to celebrate the impact they've had in our lives and um, we're going to thank God for them on next Sunday. Um, the December 15th is going to be the last Sunday with us and um, we're going to just thank God. And like I said, it's kind of dual because we're going to celebrate, but then I'm going to be sad at the same time. Um, because if, if there's anything you two have done as a couple and as a family, y'all have impacted my life and this church's life. You two are indispensable. Uh, you are irreplaceable. And we're going to miss you guys tremendously. We hope that we're a part of your life for the rest of your lives. And we're hope that, uh, we hope that we always have a place somewhere in your life. And, and when y'all get your house or wherever y'all get at make sure y'all have a, a room for VCC members if we ever going up I-95 we ever want to stop on our way to DC or New York or something we'll be able to stop by and fellowship and hang out with you guys so next Sunday we'll do that and um, just a wonderful wonderful celebration we'll have on next week listen Isaiah 43 Isaiah 43 I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet for the reading of God's word I, um, I'm excited about today and um, so excited I don't know what to do. I've gotten all kind of text messages and, and, and emails and Facebook posts. People reminded me my team lost yesterday. I said, well, we won Friday night. Y'all ain't, are y'all here today? I told Deacon Steve, I said, we won Friday, Deacon Stella, I said, we won Friday night, we let y'all win Saturday afternoon. I'll always rather win on a Friday night than a Sunday, Saturday at noon. Okay. Somebody had told me, they said, well, basketball don't count. Well, it doesn't count if you never won a national championship. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. If you never won a, you never won a national championship in basketball, it doesn't count. And then I had to remind them, we did win the national championship in track and field. We did beat them in softball. We did beat them in baseball. We beat, did beat them in lacrosse. We did beat them in gymnastics. We did beat them on the high Q team. We did beat them in chess. We did beat them in checkers. We beat them in hopscotch. I had to remind them about all that stuff. You know, it's 37 sports in every college, but we just like to just pick out the one that we want to pick out. You know, basketball is my favorite sport. <laughs> Down the court. We're playing basketball. We're playing basketball. That's what I'm saying, Brother Dale. Was, you know, that's my favorite sport. All right, well, verse 18, verse 18, Isaiah 43 and 18. All right, listen, uh, King James Version, th this, is, um, this is not our, our back to Bible month anymore, so the scriptures will come up on the screen. You're free to use your phones and your iPads this month. So glad of that. I got mine up here. And uh, we're going to just read these couple of verses, um, and then we're going to look down at a couple other. We're going to look over in Luke 2 as well, a, a verse we looked at on last week. Um, so Isaiah 43 verses 18 and 19 let's read these verses out loud in concert read remember ye not the former things neither consider the things of old behold I will do a new thing 
now it shall spring forth, shall ye not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Amen. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall ye not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now look over with me in Luke 4 and 17. New Testament, Luke chapter 4, verses 17, 18, and 19. While you're turning, I, I, I want to kind of give you a disclaimer on this message. I generally, in the book, or in the month of December, I generally do a Christmas series. Um, for about the last 12 years, I generally take out different stories from the story of Christmas from the Bible and, and, and preach and teach on that. Uh, but I, felt, I feel led in, in a different way on today to um, talk about really what God wants to do in our life in 2014. And um, for these next um, few weeks, I'm going to be talking to y'all a little bit about the shift that God wants to do in our life. Our theme for next year, just one word, shift. Everybody say shift. And um, for the next four weeks, I, I want to talk about that. Or next few weeks, I'm going to talk about that. And um, I, I, I think God is going to have some great things for us to hear and, and prepare us for it. I don't want to wait to 2014 to t tell you about the shift God is going to do. I want to tell you before you get there what God is going to do in your life. Amen, somebody. So Luke 4, 17, verses, verses 17 through 19. Let's read these scriptures out loud in concert. Read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet of Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. I want to read this. Um, skip the New Living Translation, uh, Brother bro Rufus. Bring up the Message Bible. I want to read it just in the Message Bible. Then I'm going to give you our topic. Then I'm going to pray. Then we're going to hear what God has to say to us. The Message Bible says this. It says, God's Spirit is on me. He has chosen me to preach the message of good news to the poor. Sent me to, anoint, uh, to announce pardon to prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind to set the burden and battered free and to announce this is God's year to act. Y'all gonna hear that a whole lot for the next 13 months. This is God's year to act. Say that with me, say this is God's year to act. Say it again, say this is God's year to act. I wanna talk to y'all from this subject on today that a shift is coming a shift is coming everybody say a shift is coming say it again say a shift is coming say it one more time say a shift is coming let's bow our heads father we thank you we bless you we honor you now thank you for the words you've given me to give to your people thank you for an anointed atmosphere where your word can come forth with liberty and with freedom thank you for the praise and the worship we've experienced in this house Thank you for the people of God who are here ready to receive. We come, God, not just for religious purposes and not just for entertainment, but we've come to hear a mighty word from the throne room of heaven. Speak to us as only you can. Break every yoke, God. Break every chain, God. Lift every fetter off of our lives. I thank you now, sir, for what you're going to say in advance. I thank you now for what you're going to do. Save those who need to be saved. Deliver those who are bound, God. Add to your church as you please. And we'll give your name the glory. We'll give your name the honor. And we'll give your name the praise. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. We say amen, amen, and amen. Y'all can be seated in the presence of the Lord. I, um, I want to just ask a question to start this message off by asking you, have you been sensing lately that there is something going on in the atmosphere. That God is up to something. Uh, do you feel like God is up to something big? I mean, I, I, I sense it. I can feel it. it you know, it's, it's all in my bones. You know, it's all in, in, in my mind. I, I can feel it and, 
and just tell it. That we are embarking upon one of the greatest spiritual shifts in the history of the kingdom of God. Now, the question is, as we talk about shift, and like I said, I'm going to be talking about this for the next four weeks and, and breaking this down. The question is, we're talking about shift and how our church is, is, is getting ready for a shift. I want to ask you individually, are you positioned for the shift that God is going to do? Because it is so important that we know that God is going to cause a shift to happen in the kingdom of God, but it's also so important that we are positioned correctly for what God wants to do in the life of his people. And so we got to get this. We're ready. We got to ask ourselves, are we ready to see the manifestation of all God has planned for our lives in the body of Christ in this hour? If perhaps you're wondering how to get in a position, this is what this message is all about. I, sh I shared a few weeks ago, and I want to share it again. Um, a professor shared with me um, at Florida a and while I was in school um, that the world changes every three to five years. I mean, you think about it, um, what is this, 2013, real, you know, very soon we're going to be writing 2014 on our checks. It almost seemed like I was just writing 2013 on checks and, and, and just getting used to that. But the world today is not the same world it was five years ago. The world was very different, even from technology. Um, yesterday we had uh, my grandmother's 75th birthday um, celebration. We had it here at the church, back in the fellowship hall. And um, we were able to um, FaceTime one of um, my cousins into the birthday party. She was driving, an amazing thing, they was driving from Boston back to Pennsylvania, and she was able to take her iPhone, and we was able to put it up on the big screen and plug speakers into the computer, and she was able to communicate with everybody that was in the party. Because things are changing, technology is changing. You, you could not have done that five years ago. You could not have done that six, seven years ago. The, the world is changing from, take, not to, from telephones to, to, to internet to our cars. And, and, you know, you can get in your car now. And it's so amazing now. Like, like you know, I, I, mess with, I mess with my wife all the time. I say, minivans are not like how they used to be. You know, I was like, minivan, you got baby. That, this thing is sharp. You know, I can have the AC on on the left side and the heater could be on on the right side. And thank the Lord it could be like that because she's real cold nature and she have it on 95 over there and I got to have it on 69 over here. You know, the, the things are changing. You know, some, some of your vehicles are, are so amazing. You know, your seats could be accustomed to you when you get in the car and, 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 and it positions a, a certain way when you get in your seat and when somebody else gets in the car, it positions another way. You know, and, and you don't even have, some of your vehicles, some of y'all, you got such sharp vehicles, you ain't even got to have the key to turn it on. I mean, you, 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 you're so blessed, you know, you could lose the key and still be driving. You know, you got Bluetooth technology, and you can listen to radio stations and, and XM radio and Sirius radio, and, 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 and it's, it's just with that part of life. And then, and then technology is changing from the way we do business, and, you know, you, you don't even have to go to a cash register now when you go in stores and check out. They could come up to you with a phone and, and have a little device on their phone and check you out right with their phone because, because the world is changing. The way, the way we, we conduct wars, the way we do politics, the way we do school is so much different. The way we do school is so much different. You know, I, I, I tell my wife all the time, and I, as I look at Patrick's homework from time to time, I say if I was in the first grade or back when I was in the first grade, I could not have passed this. I mean, I don't remember being able to read a whole book as a six-year-old and, and, and being able to do math and algebra and pre-algebra and some of, the, some of the geometry things they do as a first grader. I'm like, the world is changing. It's changing dramatically. It's changing dramatically. And every, every three to five years or three to seven years, the world changes. But, but when it comes to the kingdom of God, it's every about 30 to 50 years that there's a shift that takes place. There's a shift that takes place every 30 to 50 years. And, and if you're part of the church, you, 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 we have to be like the sons of Issachar. The Bible says the sons of Issachar, they, they knew the times and seasons, and, you know, they knew what time it was. They were able to interpret what God was doing. You know, when you're in the church, you got to, there has to be a group of people in every church and every ministry that senses what God is doing and senses when God is moving and God is shifting. And, 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 and sometimes when you don't have those type of people in your churches, that's why you can have some churches that can become like dinosaurs. 
You know, that's why, have you ever been in some churches and it seems like they're stuck back in 1955? I mean, the same songs they were singing 20 years ago, the same, the same type of way they did worship, the same type of way their, their sound is, the same type of way their, their lights are, the same way they conduct different things, they, 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 because they, they don't get with the shift of what God is doing. They don't get with the shift of, of where God is taking us. And, 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 the, and that, was the thing with, that, that was the thing with Moses. Moses, as he was leading the people of God, he had to always stay with the cloud. He had to always shift with the cloud. And my prayer as your pastor of Victory Christian Center is I always pray, God, don't let me miss the cloud. I don't care if we never build another building. I don't care if we never get another member. I don't care what, ne what never happens again in our church. God, my prayer to you is that we don't miss you and we don't miss your presence and we don't miss the cloud or where you're leading us. That's why we gotta, that's why churches and ministries must, must move away from just having church. See, when you're just having church, you will miss the shift of what God is doing. You'll miss the shift of where God is taking it. If all you want to do is just come to church, get your shout, go home, say you had a great time, you can miss it. But you got to get connected to the shift and what God is doing in the kingdom of God. Somebody say amen. amen. So we got to understand that right now, and I've been saved for almost 20 years, and, and right now, and I sense it, that we're seeing a major seismic shift in the kingdom of God. There's a major seismic shift in the kingdom of God. Tell your neighbor that. Say, there is a major seismic shift in the kingdom of God. You got to get it. Major. I know that was a mouthful, but you got to get it. You got to get it. Matter of fact, tell them again. Tell them again. Tell them. Go ahead and tell them. There's a major seismic shift in the kingdom of God. Yes, there is. It's major. Seismic is big. Just in case you don't know what that is, that's big. There's a huge shift in the kingdom of God. And, and God is doing something in the church. He's doing something in the kingdom of God. He's taking our churches from the places of where we're no longer just going to be um, um, known as, as black churches or white churches or Hispanic churches or, or rich churches or poor churches. God is taking the church to a place where we're just going to be known as the church where we can come together in fellowship no matter how much money we got in our bank account, no matter how big the square footage of our home is, no matter how many cars we have, no matter what our skin color is, no matter how many times, how many times we've been married, no matter how many times we've been divorced, no matter how many times we made mistakes, no matter how many times we messed up, God is bringing the church to a place where people of all types of backgrounds and all types of people can come together and worship and praise. Do I have anybody with me today? That's what God is doing in the church. And I'm going to share more about that in the coming weeks of what God is doing. But I, I want to talk to you more so today about what God wants to do in your life individually and how we need to set up our lives for what he wants to do. Now, individually, God is going to shift your life. Touch yourself and say, God is going to shift my life. Say it again. Say, God is going to shift my life. Now, I have to repeat something I shared with y'all a couple weeks ago because you got to get this because you got to really get this, that for God, or God had to crack you, move you, relocate you, expose you to different types of people and kinds of people. God had to let you go through series of failures to break you down and to sift you so he can shift you. That's good right there. And, and, and many of you, after years of pain, heartache, misfortune, trouble, confusion, now you're ready for what God wants to do in your life. Is anybody hearing me today? And I want to declare to you, and this message is more of a, of a declaration and more of a prophecy. I want to declare to somebody today that the second half of your life is going to be so much greater than the first half of your life. I know the devil might have told you that your life is over, that your, your strength is gone, but I want to tell some person in here that God is going to renew your strength like eagles. He's going to cause you to mount up like eagles. He's going to cause you to run and not be weary. The second half of your life is going to be so much better than the first half. God is setting you up for a great blessing. Your best is yet to come. There is so much more in store for you. Those are not just cliches, 
but that is a word from God that God is setting you up for something great in your life. And if you believe it, why don't you give God a good seven second praise for what he's going to do. Now there's a shift coming to your life. God is getting ready to position you to bless you. I, I, I wrote this down this morning while I was typing and I think the Holy Ghost gave it to me and I want to share it with you it might not sound deep to you but I, I, I got to share this with somebody in here God said this he said he's going to cause opportunity to find you he's going to cause opportunity to find you glory to God You're going to just be going along in life and God is going to have divine appointments. You're going to run into people that God has set up to bless you and set up to take you to another level, set up to take you to another dimension. God is going to cause opportunity to find you. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me don't, don't praise just yet because let me, let, let, let me help you out with this prophecy. That's why you're going to have to be very careful with how you treat the people you're going to meet the next few weeks. Mm. Oh, oh. The Holy Ghost said, be very careful how you treat some of the people you're going to meet the next few weeks because some, because some of the people that you might feel like going off on in the flesh, some of the people you might feel like ignoring, God says some of the very people you, you want to ignore, those are the people he has designed to bless your life. Oh, my mercy. Woo! That's why the Bible says be careful how you entertain some because you might be entertaining angels. You might be entertaining in the next few weeks. You're going to be entertaining people and communicating with people that God has designed and orchestrated to bless your life. So that's why every morning, what you, this is what you're going to need to do. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is a prophetic message. Every morning you wake up, you need to wake up in a prayerful mindset and ask the Lord, God, give me the right spirit so when I meet every person or run into the people I meet on today, I don't want to be in my flesh. I want to make sure that I don't cause them to be offended or run away my blessing. So you might have to force yourself to smile. You might have to force yourself to be kind. You might have to force yourself to be nice. You might have to force yourself to be happy. You might have to force yourself to do something because God is going to cause opportunity to find you. And you got to understand that sometimes when opportunity comes and knocks, sometimes if you don't treat it the right way the first time, you might miss that opportunity and it might take years or may take decades. So you don't want to miss the opportunity that God is getting ready to bring your way. I wish somebody would give God glory for the opportunity that's getting ready to find you in your life. If you got a business, opportunity is going to find you. If you, if you got something you sell, God is going to use opportunity to find you. If, you, if you. if you have a gift, if you have a talent, God is going to cause opportunity to find you. Don't despise what God is going to do in your life the next two or three weeks. God is getting ready to cause opportunity to find you. And some of you that are not getting this right now in about three weeks, you're going to be saying, I know what Pastor was talking about right there. I know what he was saying. That was right on time for me. Glory to God. God want me to tell you too as well. Is it all right if I talk to y'all like this? God want me to tell somebody in here that you, what you're getting ready to get is unexpected blessings. And, and this is not a bless me message. This, this is a kingdom message. God wants me to tell you he has unexpected blessings for you. Un, unexpected blessings. What is une, suddenly you're going to meet the right person. Suddenly your health is going to improve. What used to be a struggle is not going to be a struggle anymore. What should have taken years is going to happen in a fraction of a second. 
You may feel like you're stuck today. You could never accomplish a dream, overcome a problem. It's been too long. You missed too many opportunities. God is saying, no, get ready. I'm about to shift some things in your life. Some doors are going to open for you that was not open in the past. God is saying to some of you, go back to them doors because the doors that was locked the first time, God is saying, I done unlocked them this go round. I ain't just trying to make you feel good today. I'm prophesying a shift is coming. Tell your neighbor a shift is coming. And it may not look like it in the natural, but in the supernatural, we serve a supernatural God. The verse comes to my mind that, 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 that comes to my mind in Ephesians, the third chapter, that tells us that, that God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we're able to ask or even think, according to the power that worketh in us. God is about to do something in our lives. I want to tell some of you, the enemies you've seen in the past, some of them you're not going to see anymore. Some of the addictions and bad habits that are holding you back, we decree and declare they're broken today and God's favor is being released over your life. You're getting ready to be propelled forward. Somebody say forward. Say it again, say forward. There's, a, there's an acceleration, there's a shift to take you beyond where you could go on your own. Many people say you shouldn't be doing, you're, not going, you, that you're going to be doing stuff and God is going to be using you and people are going to look at you and be incredibly confound by what, what, by what you're doing. People are going to look at you and say, my, look at the family they came from. Look, they, they don't know their mother. Look, they don't know their father. Look, they don't have the education. Look, they don't have, the, they don't have all the resources. But let me tell you something. When God is on your side, God can override all of the stuff that you don't have. Matter of fact, when you are without something, you become a greater candidate for God to do something greater in your life. See, people that got all the resources... They don't need God to do nothing powerful in their life. But when you've grown up without resources, you've grown up without help, you've grown up without daddies, you've grown up without mothers, you've grown up without support, you've grown up without money, you've grown up without education. My God, for some reason, God is magnetized to you and God will come to you and use you in a powerful way, just like he did Gideon. The Bible says that Gideon was saying, God, why is it you want to use me? Why is it you want to use me as a leader in the army of God? God says, I want to use you Gideon in a powerful and in a great way and God used Gideon in a powerful way in the same way Moses God told Moses he said I want you to lead six million people out of Egypt and Moses was saying God I can't talk right He's, he was saying God I'm, I, I, I gotta I got I got I I I got speech problem I got I I got Speech, speech problem. That's how Moses talked. Moses had a speech problem. And God looked at Moses and God said, Moses, who made your mouth? He said, I go with you, Moses. I be with you. All I need for you to do is go in front of Pharaoh and say, tell him to let my people go. And when you tell him to let my people go, he's going to have no choice but to let my people go and go and worship in the wilderness. God is going to use you in spite of your shortcomings, in spite of your past, in spite of your downfallings, in spite of all of your faults, in spite of what you didn't do, in spite of what you did, in spite of how you messed up, in spite of how you quit at one time in your life, in spite of how you backslid 50 times in your life. God says, I'm going to anoint you, I'm going to use you, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to shift your life, and all of your haters are going to realize that I'm on your side and I'm using you in a powerful way I wish somebody ought to give God praise right there for God using you in spite of you glory to God I declare there's a shift coming in your life there's favor coming in your life some of you you're gonna God is gonna prepare you to a place to where 40 years down the road what should have happened 40 years down the road is going to happen right now. He's going to give you the idea. He's going to give you one good break. You're going to look up and find yourself at the top. You're going to look up and find yourself the head and not the tail. 
You didn't see it coming. Things are just going to fall into place. Doors that was closed in the past. I'm telling you, you need to go back and check them again. Things have shifted. The dream you had is going to come to pass. It's going to happen in your life. Somebody say amen. amen. Let me just give you a, 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 a couple things, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut across the, the, the field, and I'm going to take the shortcut. I want to, I want to reiterate to you how a, does a shift happen, happens in a person's life, how a shift happens in a person's life. I gave you these a few weeks ago, but I think it's necessary for me to kind of reiterate them and maybe give you deeper revelation on them. How does a shift happen in a person's life? Number one, it happens through revelation from God. It happens through revelation from God. God will give you a revelation, and it'll change your whole perspective. It'll change your whole perspective. That's why being in the house of God is so good because when you're in the house of God, you're in a place where God reveals things. That's why it's good for you to be up on an anointed preacher that gets revelation from God because it gives you the ability to get a revelation from God for yourself. Revelation begats revelation. You sitting up under a man of God or woman of God that gets no revelation from God and all they're do doing is just giving you manuscripts and giving you just sermons, warmed up sermons they've been preaching for 50 years, you ain't going to get no revelation under that. A message they done stole from somebody, you ain't going to get no revelation from that. Revelation from God, it'll shift your life. I, re I remember years ago when, when, when God gave me a revelation to, to, to first to become a minister and it just, it just, it just it messed me up. It messed me up. It messed me up. I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to, this is not something I wanted to do. <laughs> you know, you, you probably look at me now like, boy, this is the, like something you want to do all your life. The devil is a liar. I just, when I got saved, I just loved playing the keyboard. All I just wanted to do, you know, I had a dream of maybe just playing for somebody like John P. Key or Hezekiah Walker and, and um, you know, and, and, you know, doing something like that. And somewhere along the line, God shifted me and gave me a revelation from God about preaching the gospel. Just shifted my life. And then I, I, I started doing that. I was fine with that. And then God started talking to me about something I really didn't want to do, and it was pastoring. I was like, God, you're really out of your mind. You're crazy. And, and so I, I got a revelation from God, and, 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 it, and it shifted my life. And then moving on, God began to reveal other things to me and, and show me other things. And it just, it just revelation from God would, would, would just totally shift your life. It just shift your life. You know, you get in the word of God, God will begin to speak some things to you and begin to say some specific, it, it almost like the words jump out to you and it's like God is talking to you specifically. You're like, and, and, you, and here's the funny thing, you'll try and go and show it to somebody else and they're looking at you, you know, like, like, you know, like you got grits on your nose or something. Like, what? Revelation from God, it'll, it'll totally change your life. A revelation from God can deliver you and set you free. You get alone with God, you, you, you turn off some of them reality shows and get off of Facebook and get in God's book, you'll be shocked at what you can get from God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, 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 so revelation from God, it'll shift your life. Here's the second thing, Pro prophetic utterances. Prophetic utterances. This message, believe it or not, this message is a prophetic utterance, and whether you know it or not, it is shifting your life. It is shifting your life. Your life is being shifted today. Right now, at 12, 12 p.m., December the 1st, your life is being shifted. Your life is going to another dimension. Tell your neighbor you're going to another dimension. See, we don't move, move from the point of just going from another, from, to another level. God is now taking you to another dimension. See, you don't want to just go to another level. God wants to take you to another dimension. Check this out. Prophetic utterances. Prophetic utterances. That's why we have to be open to the prophetic word of God. Let me move on. I, I got to finish this. Number three is sowing. Sowing. When you give, it shifts your life. Now, let me help you out with something. Let me help you out with something. I might need to come a little closer to you on this. Let me help you out with something. 
you know, for years, for years, I had a problem with giving. I had a problem with giving. B because, you know, because for one, I looked at it from a natural standpoint. Minister Rashard, a lot of times, I looked at it from a natural standpoint. I, I grew up in a church where we, we, had, we had all kind of drives and all kind of fundraisers, and we couldn't even get a dough knob on the dough. And so I just looked at giving from a natural standpoint and not from a spiritual standpoint. You know, I, 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 was, I, I, was, I was more so from a natural standpoint thinking, well, you know, you know I can't give the church my money because they're not doing with it what I want them to do with it. I was just letting the devil just use me. And, and, and cutting off my blessings. Until God gave me a revelation. And it, it, was, it was a nasty, it was a nasty rebuke the Holy Ghost gave to me. A nasty rebuke God gave to me. God sat me down one day. He said, son, when you give to a church, you have no audacity to even think of how the church should use how you give into the kingdom. God says, first of all, giving is a spiritual thing. It's not a natural thing. I only, God said, I only use natural elements in order to bring spiritual blessings into your life. He said, because we live in a natural world, money is the medium that I can only use in the earth in order to bring blessings into your life. I don't know if y'all getting what I'm saying. Money is the medium of exchange in order for heaven to be sown into your life. There, it is the medium of exchange. It is the medium of exchange. And so God had to sit me down and said, son, first of all, you need to understand it is a spiritual thing. It is something that you're designed to do. It's something that you're supposed to do. It's something that you must do. And how is it that you could go and buy a pair of Jordans and you can't give unto me? And I never forget, I never forget going and taking something that I knew God told me to sow it, something I bought with the money I sold, and I never forget it getting stolen. A nice Alpine CD player that was in my Mazda 323 had a pop-off face. I never forget coming back from a gospel concert you would think people wouldn't steal from a gospel con from a gospel concert. I come back and it's gone. And God said, "Now look at here. You don't know how to give." He said, "I know how to take away from you and take out of your life and give it to somebody who will take it and sell it and somehow put it in the hands of somebody who will give to the kingdom." I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. So since that day, sowing has not been a problem for my life. It has not been a problem. Since I had that rebuke from God, God says, and God sat me down and dealt with me. He said, son, it's a spiritual thing, but not only that, if you want your life to go to another dimension, if you want your life to be shifted, you got to understand that every time you give, the Bible talks about how God, he's the Lord over the harvest. A person who's a Lord over harvest, they look over their seed. Every time you sow a seed in the kingdom of God, it does not go unforgotten. Do, do, do y'all hear what I'm saying? I, every time you give unto God, God is looking down over your seed and some way, somehow or another, he's going to bring a harvest back to your life in a powerful and in a mighty way. <laughs> woo, woo. Tell your neighbor, you better give. Oh, glory, my mercy. Tell your neighbor again, you better give. Two more. Anointed atmospheres. Anointed atmospheres. Anointed atmosphere. When you're in an anointed atmosphere, God shifts your life. When you're in an anointed place, God shifts your life. When you're in an anointed church, God shifts your life. When you're in an anointed ministry, God shifts your life. Our lives shift like that. And then number five, through divine connections. Divine connections. You want, you want to make sure that every undivine connection that is in your life is cut off. There's some connections that will pull you down. 
Young people, there's some connection that you can have with some people, it will pull you down. Older people, there's some connections in your life, they will pull you down. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? This is some good stuff right here. I don't, I don't know, was y'all in line for four hours the other night or something? I don't know. This is good stuff. This is good. Now let me, let, let me, I'm going to just share this with you. I'm doing, man, the Holy Ghost must stop all our clocks. I'm doing really good on time. I'm, 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 I'm just going to tell you what God is shifting in your life, and then I'm done. I'm done. What God is shifting in your life. And, and I want to use as an acronym the word shift. God gave this to me late last night. I want to, and these are some things that kind of just fell in place as an acronym. Acronym is using the first letters, or using the letters in a word and using them as meanings. What is God shifting? Number one, as for the S, he's going to shift your spirit. He's shifting your spirit. Some of you, you're getting a hunger for God you never had before. You're getting a thirst for God you never had before. Some of you never thought three or four years ago you would find yourself in church as consistent as you are right now. You want to know why? God is shifting your spirit. Your spirit is being shifted. The Bible says, they that thirst and hunger after righteousness shall be filled. Your spirit is being shifted. There's something taking place in your spirit, in your soul, in, 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 your, in your spirit where God is transforming you. He's making you more like Jesus. He's causing you to, to be changed. He's get, the fruit of the spirit is being developed in your life like never before. You're loving people you thought you would never love. You're being nice to people. You're having more patience you thought you would never have. Your spirit is being shifted in a powerful way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let me just, as a, as a, as a, as a show of hands, who in here you've been sensing your spirit is shifting? I mean, you've been wanting to pray more, want to get in the word more. You want to hear more about God. That's good. That's good. God is shifting you. He's shifting your spirit. And I decree and I declare over your life today, that as your spirit is being shifted, that God is elevating your life. And don't get, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Do not get satisfied with the shifting God is doing in your spirit right now. Do not get satisfied. God wants to continue to take you higher in him. Glory to God. So the first thing, the S is spirit. The second thing, H, your home. Your home. God is shifting your home. You might can't even sense it in the natural. You might be saying, well, Pastor, you, you just don't know. I just left the house and we was arguing this morning. I want to tell you something. You got to get this prophetically. You got to get this good. Before every breakthrough, there's a major battle. Matter of fact, it's when you get the closest to your breakthrough, the enemy fights you the greatest. So, if your home has been going through all kind of hell, that's a sign that there's a major shift getting ready to happen in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In your home, God is going to do something tremendous. Tell your neighbor God is shifting your home. I mean, he's shifting your home. He's going to shift that relationship between you and your daughter. He's going to shift that relationship between you and your son. He's going to shift that relationship between you and your spouse. He's going to shift that relationship in a positive direction. God is going to save some people in your home. In 2014, God is going to do some things in your home, save some people you thought would never be saved. And you ought to thank God for the shift he's going to do in your home right now. The shift. There's a shift. There's a presence of God that is traveling and flowing to your home right now. Let me give you this. Let me give you this. The I, God is going to shift your income. I'm going to say that again. God is going to shift your income. Now, let me, say, let me say this. I got a revelation from God on this the other day. I, I, I done been preaching for almost 20 years. 
it's funny to me a lot of times how people don't want to hear you preach about income and money and stuff like that but the number one thing people come and ask me to pray for is for money breakthroughs how is it you want me to pray for money breakthroughs but you don't want us to talk and to prophesy to you about money coming to your life I rebuke that mindset and that spirit today. I'm up here in this pulpit to preach to you and to give you the word and to tell you that God is getting ready to shift your income in such a way that you're going to be able to be a blessing. You're going to be able to give. You're going to be able to sow. You're going to be able to take care of your bills. You're going to be able to do what you need to do to make it in everyday life. You're going to be able to buy your children some shoes. You're going to be able to buy yourself a purse every now and then. God is getting ready to shift your income. There's a shift coming your way. There's promotion coming your way. There's an increase coming your way. I don't care if it's a hundred dollars. You ought to thank God for the increase of a hundred dollars in your life. You ought to thank God for the extra fifty dollars he's about to put in your pocket. You ought to thank God right now. There is a reward. There is an increase. There's a claim coming your way. I receive it. I declare it. And I decree it in Jesus name. Woo! I decree that over you, your life. I decree over God's people, over God's people, that we're not going to be broke all of our life. That's going to be our testimony. But God is bringing us to a place where we ain't going to always have to say, "Child, you know I'm broke today. We can't go out and get nothing to eat. Let me look and see if we got any spam up in this stuff." Let me tell you something. God is bringing you to a place where He's going to say, "Girl, you want to go out to Red Lobster?" tonight girl I got you taken care of you want to go out to Olive Garden or Carabas girl I got you taken care of God is getting ready to bless your life in such a way the Bible says give and it shall be given unto you press down shaking together and running over there is a running over blessing that's getting ready to come to the kingdom of God and because you've been sowing because you've been giving because you've been giving and tithing and giving offerings I hear the Holy Ghost saying your income is about to shift and God is about to give you increase there's grants on the way there's rewards on the way there's income on the way there's promotion on the way and you ought to give God praise right there for about 15 seconds. Woo! 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 There's favor on you. There's a blessing on your life. You are the child of the living God. The blessing of Abraham is on your life. The blessing of Abraham is over your life. I decree the blessing of Abraham is over your life. God is blessing you. God is taking you to another realm. God is taking you to another dimension. And we, we ought to just, even if you're broke right now, you ought to praise God that you ain't going to be broke too much longer. I feel like preaching that right there, 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 right there. My income is about to be blessed. Take that devil. My income is about to be blessed. Me and my spouse are not going to argue over the money anymore. Your house is not going to be fighting over money anymore. Your house is not going to be fighting over debt stuff anymore. God is getting ready to bless you and increase you. You ought to give him glory for what he's getting ready to do in the kingdom of God. God is getting ready to do something. He's getting ready to shift some things. He's getting ready to do some things in your life. You ought to give him glory. Woo! Come on, give him praise.
Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Come on, let's take a good 30 second praise right there for what God is going to do in our money, for what God is going to do in our income. Give him a good 30 second praise right there for how he's going to bless your family, for how he's going to bless your children, for how he's going to bless your business, for how he's going to bless your home. Give him a praise! saying we've got to break the spirit of lack off of our lives we got to break the spirit of being broke off of our lives we got to quit glorifying being broke we got to quit glorifying looking all messed up and ghetto we got to quit glorifying looking all crazy and stupid how many of y'all know you feel blessed when you let me just ask the ladies how many of you ladies feel blessed when you can go get your nails done go get your hair done and go and get you an outfit from time to time. Now let me ask the fellas in here, how many of you feel blessed when you go get you a new pair of tennis shoes or a new t-shirt? Maybe a new watch every now and then. Now let me ask you everybody a question real quick. Which one is better? Just like the AT&T commercial when the man asked the little children, which one is better? Being broke? Of being blessed. I ain't hear you. Which one is better? Being broke or being blessed? Now give him 10 seconds of praise for being blessed in the kingdom of God. Wow! while you're standing I gotta give you this I'm gonna I give you the other two on Wednesday night listen I gotta give you this I didn't know why the Holy Ghost gave me this and I see it goes with the income thing I gotta close with this you gotta understand the Israelites had been in slavery for many years they would have been mistreated by Pharaoh forced to work long hours not given the proper rest or food but one day through a series of events God supernaturally brought them out. Tell your neighbor, God is going to bring you out. Now check this out. As they were leaving, God calls them to have favor with their enemies. Exodus 3 and 21, look at the verse. It comes up on the screen. It says, and I will make the Egyptians favorably disposed towards this people so that when you leave, you will not go Now, I didn't put that in there. That's in the Bible. Tell your neighbor, you're not going empty-handed. Tell them God is going to put something in your hand. And then it goes on and says, Every woman is to ask her neighbor and any woman living in her house for articles of silver and gold for clothing, which you will put on your sons and your daughters. Tell somebody, my children are about to look real good. And then he says, and so you will plunder the Egyptians. Now that was before they came out. Now let me read to you what happened after they came out. Exodus 12, 35 to 36 says the Israelites did as Moses instructed. Tell your neighbor, you got to do what the preacher says. It says the Israelites did as Moses instructed and asked the Egyptians for articles of silver and gold and for clothing. The Lord had made the Egyptians favorably disposed toward the people and they gave them what they asked for. Tell your neighbor you about to get what you asked for. Gave them what they asked for. So they plundered the Egyptians. You got to notice God calls them to have favor. 
the same people that had oppressed them for years, pushed them down and mistreated them, suddenly changed their mind. They said, in effect, we've decided that we like you now. We want to be good to you. What it actually says in the Bible is that God struck down all the firstborn in Egypt. And that's why Pharaoh told them to go for fear of their lives. Not because of the change of the heart, but it was still a shift caused by God. So the principle is the same. And so on their way out, they gave the Israelites, the people of God, their gold, their silver, and all of their jewelry. What happened? The Israelites came into a shift. God changed their enemy's mind. And I'm here to prophesy to y'all, people of God. Now, it might only be for about 30 of y'all, but I want to tell somebody in here that God is getting ready to change somebody's mind about you. People who make decisions that didn't want to give you a promotion. God is saying, I'm getting ready to change my mind about you. I'm getting ready to change their mind about you people that said they're not going to bless you God said I'm going to change my mind or change their mind about you people that that can approve the loan God said I'm going to change their mind about you people that can approve you getting a new car God said I'm going to change their mind about you they're going to look at your credit situation and God said I'm going to cause them to change their mind about you God says what I'm going to do in your life is going to blow your mind and I wish I could get somebody in here to give God about a good 30 second praise for how he's getting ready to change your mind now listen listen I gotta close it we're doing real good an hour and a half service my God that must be the Holy Ghost I need for you to do this for me real quick now don't do it if you don't if, if you don't want it I told you you saw they was only blessed when they did as Moses instructed. I need you to go and tell seven people real quick that God is getting ready to shift your life. Come on, go and tell somebody God is getting ready to shift your life. Come on. God is getting ready to shift your life. You're not going to be where you are all the time. You're not going to be in that position forever. You're getting ready to go to another dimension. You're getting ready to go to a new place in God. God is shifting your spirit. God is shifting your home. God is shifting your income. God is shifting your finances. God is shifting your life. You ought to give God praise before he does anything else. Give God praise! Give God praise! Come on, I wish I had some runners in here. I wish I had some leapers in here. I wish I had some shouters up in here. Hallelujah! 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 My life is shifting! My life is shifting! My life is shifting! My life is shifting! God is blessing my life! Hallelujah!
There's a shifting in the atmosphere. There's a shifting in the atmosphere. God is doing something in your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many of you, God is going to take you from a place that you saw as normal all of your life. All you saw was unnormal relationships and bad relationships and bad financial situations. God is going to shift your life. And for many of you, it's going to feel unnormal for what he's going to do. But God is saying, that's normal. Glory to God. It's going to be normal. It's going to be normal. It's going to be normal for you to pay your bills on time. It's going to be normal for you to be able to eat. It's going to be normal for you to be able to go to the doctor. It's going to be normal for you to be able to get your needs met. It's going to be normal. It's going to be normal. It's going to be normal for your home to be blessed and your marriage to be blessed and your kids to be blessed and your kids to act right and your kids to respect you and your kids to clean up their room and your kids to help to take out the trash. It's going to be normal. He's shifting your spirit. Some of you, 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 you you're feeling a change and these last, some of you, I hear the Spirit say, for some of you, the last seven weeks, you've been sensing something in your spirit, and it's, it's not a spooky thing, but in your spirit, you've been sensing God doing something extraordinary in your spirit. Dreams and visions, and you're hearing God speak to your life, and you're sensing God do something in your life. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God is giving, some of you, God has been giving you a plan and it's been setting out a plan and, and, and things to for the next five years, the next 10 years. He's been, he's been giving you a plan for your life and for your family and, and where you'll be. And God is directing and ordering your steps and God is giving you a plan. He's giving you the plans of your heart. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It's a new season in your life. It's a new season. Embrace what God is doing. 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 Come on, give God praise right there. Give God praise right now. Grab your neighbor by the hand. I want to pray. It's a new day. Praise and worship. Can y'all help me? It's fresh anointing. It's flowing my way. It's a season of power. It's a season of power and prosperity. It's a new season. It's a new season is coming to me. Come on, let's sing that a few times. It's a new season. It's, it's a, a new season. season. It's a new Break your hands. Let's let's sing this. Break hands and sing. It's a new season. Come on, let's sing your name. It's a new day. Come on, fresh anointing. A fresh anointing. Come on, it's flowing. It's flowing my way. Come on, it's a season of power. It's a season of power and prosperity.
have your neighbors by the hand. I want us to pray this new season over our lives. Yes, Lord. God, we thank you for this new season in our lives today. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for where you're taking us, God. There's a shift happening in Union County. There's a shift happening in Alachua County. There's a shift happening in Columbia County and Bradford County and Baker County. There's a shift happening in Clay County. There's a shift happening all around this state and all around this country. There's a shift happening in the kingdom of God. You're doing something seismic and we're so glad to be a part of it, God. God, we thank you for the homes that are being shifted all over this room families and marriages children children who were wayward they're being shifted right now marriages that was on the verge of divorce they're being shifted right now people that were on the verge of suicide we cancel it now in Jesus name thank you for this shift today thank you for the hope that you give us God thank you for the blessing that is in our spirit. Thank you for the blessing on our home. Thank you for the tremendous blessing in our income. God, you're an awesome God. Thank you for this word. We love you today. We honor you. We glorify you. We give your name praise. In Jesus' name, amen. It's a new season. It's a new season, fast. It's a new day. Come on, fresh anointing. A fresh anointing. Come on, it's flowing my way. It's flowing my way. It's a season, it's it's a season of power and prosperity. And prosperity. Come on, take it out. It's a new season. It's a new season. Come on, everybody. It's a new season. It's a new season. Come on, sing that with us. It's a new. It's a new it's a new season. It's a new season. Come on, everybody. It's a new season. It's a new season. Yeah, it's a new. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new season. Come on, break it down. Break it down. It's a new season. How many of y'all you received this word today? Listen real quick while we're standing. I want to give you an opportunity. Everyone, if you can stand, um, you okay back there? Why y'all children be standing, uh, sitting down? My wife is up here pregnant and y'all are sitting down. Y'all have a lot of energy. Y'all should be able to stand. Amen, somebody. If, you, if you're not holding a baby, you should be able to stand. To stand. All right? Listen, if you're in here and you need to make the greatest decision that you can make in your life, I want to give you an opportunity to make one of three great decisions. Number one, if you need salvation, it's the greatest decision that you can make. How many of y'all know people need salvation today? People need salvation. Jesus died so that you can live. If you're here and you're not saved, you are lost. The tremendous truth is that if you die without Jesus in your life, you're going to hell. There's one or two places you go when you die. Either it's heaven or it's hell. It's your choice. The tremendous thing, though, is that Jesus died so that you don't have to go to hell. I don't care if you're 8 years old or 80 years old. If you're in this place and you're not saved, I don't care if you're 80, 100 years old. Jesus died for you so that you can live. Amen, somebody. So number one, if you need to be saved, and number two, you need to rededicate your life to Jesus. I want to give you that opportunity to today to make that decision. If you're backslidden and you need to get right with Jesus, you don't get saved over again. I heard somebody tell me the other day, they say they, they, they need to get saved again. You don't get saved again. You get saved one time. Now you might backslide along the way, need to rededicate your life to Jesus. And that's a decision you need to make because there's no worse thing to do than to be a person running away from God. The Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. God will make your life hard in such a way till you come to him. 
And so if you need salvation or you need to rededicate your life, I want you to come here to this altar. We'll pray with you. And then thirdly, if you need to join a good church, if you're looking for a church home and you're not looking for a perfect church, my God, I wish this was a perfect church, but it's not perfect because I'm a member of it. And because I'm a member of it, it's not perfect because I'm not perfect. There are no perfect churches because there are no perfect people. But if you need a place where you can call your, yourself a call uh, call your, your church or place a church home i want to give you that opportunity too as well and give you an opportunity to join a church a local body not just watch service online if you're watching church online i'm talking to you but you need a church home a place that you can be covered physically in the spirit so if you need to make one of those three decisions this altar is open now you want to be saved you want to rededicate your life come to this side you want to join a church come to this side right here we'll love to welcome you the doors of this church is open and give it that opportunity to do that today in Jesus name if that's you I'm giving you 15 seconds to make the greatest choice that you can make amen amen glory to God bless you Anybody else, you're here, you need to join a church, you need, you need to get right with Jesus. This is your opportunity today. How you doing, precious baby? You good? You just so cute, you just so cute. Well, listen, Leisha, we want to welcome you as, as a member of this church. And, um, yeah, I know you and my wife have been communicating and talking, and um, I think this is the greatest decision that you can make. I know you have a relationship with God, and you just want to do things right. And listen, we want to welcome you, and I take great great humility as as a pastor to say you know what you want to be a part of this church i'm humbled by that and we welcome you to the vcc church family and we welcome you in jesus name paris how you doing you're gonna have to go to paris now with a name like that so listen, church family, let's welcome Sister Alicia and let's welcome her beautiful daughter, Paris, to our church family. You'll get us some stuff afterwards. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Listen, let's thank God for the shift that he's doing in the kingdom of God. Listen, y'all be seated in Jesus' name. God is good. Amen. He's good. The kingdom is growing. God is doing great things. I want y'all to believe God with me. We, we, um, I'm believing God for 20 more souls to be saved by the end of the year. Amen, Amen somebody. And so y'all pray with me that we'll see 20 more souls get saved by December 31st or even on watch night. Watch night is going to be a great service that night and maybe we'll get all 20 of them on that night. And uh, listen, let's prepare our hearts to give if you need a, a tithing envelope. You can lift your hands. Our ushers will get it to you. Um, this is our time to give. We believe in giving and sowing. Thank you so much for all of you who give. And so um, just want to let you guys know that in the next couple weeks, we're doing some great things for our lobby. We're, um, we're going to be moving LaShonda from out of the nursery. She's been working out of the nursery for the last um, three or four months. And so we're getting a nice little area done in the corner in there. And uh, we're having to get some equipment too as well. Um, so um, your sewing, your giving makes all happens what we do and help to sustain and help our ministry to run and do what we do in the kingdom of God. 2014 is going to be an incredible year, an incredible year. We're going to be able to bless people and, and sow into people's lives and be a blessing to people in our community. What we want to always do, people, people of God, is be the type of church that if God was to rapture us away, that our community will miss us. That our community will miss us and wonder, well, where have those VCCites gone? Um, if I can make up a word like that. <laughs> where those VCCites are gone. Um, people should miss a church whenever they're gone. It should be 30 years later that people wonder, well, what happened to Victory Christian Center? No, people should notice, uh, notice immediately that we've gone on to be with God. And so um, we're thankful to God for the impact that he's allowed us to have in our community and what we're doing. Listen, uh, basketball season has started. I was just, after the Gators lost Saturday, I was hoping that God would at least let us beat Stark um, Saturday night, but that didn't happen. And so, um, but our basketball season is, is in, in running and let's pray for Brother Rufus. Um, he's coaching our basketball team again, amen. And um, let's pray for him and um, that they'll continue to do well 
and um, and um, um, you didn't want that boy to walk through y'all huddle last night, did you? <laughs> Got to handle it a little different next time. Handle it a little different, a little different. Just handle it a little different. Um, but let's pray for them. Deacon Steve is coaching over at Fort White, and uh, we want them to win every game but Union County. And um, so let's do that. Who in here else? Who in here else coaches or plays? Jordan plays, Brother Ridgeway. You, you coach your son, does it? Oh, oh man, oh man, yeah, man, man. Junior last night hit a three, made me just about jump out my seat, man. They had a shot. They fouled you, man. It didn't call the foul. That should have been an and one. I about cussed that. I mean, I about said something to that. <laughs> That's a member of my church. You better not. You better not hit him like that. And Jordan and Buddy had a great game. Oh, we had a great half, bro, Rufus. We had a great half. The second half, we woke up and realized that we was playing. And so, listen, um, this sport, I can't wait for this sport season to be over, and a football season at least to be over. Have they fired much jump yet? They haven't fired him yet. Well, FSU, I guess this is y'all year. Um, I'm just praying y'all don't win the national championship. But, but okay, this is y'all year, though. LSU in Florida, we, we need prayer. But listen, let's stand to our feet. Sister Pat, do we need to be paying, praying for Buffalo to trade CJ? Uh, uh, do, what do we need to do about that situation? I'd be like, do we just need to have a fasting and just tell him to, to trade him somewhere? He likes Buffalo. We all trying to figure that out, too. Why did he like it? It's cold. It's... It's, it's no beach up there. You know, we're just trying to figure that out. Do they even have a theme park up there? They got a theme park? They even got a theme park. <laughs> you, been, you went to Niagara Falls when you went up there? You up, be honest. When I went there, you out there for like about three months, I mean three minutes, and you like, let's go. <laughs> it ain't nothing but water falling. I'm like, let's go with just water. Nah, I ain't getting on no boat. The last time black people got on the boat, it didn't turn out good. Okay, whatever. Whatever. All right, listen, y'all got your offering. You're ready to give? Yeah, that's good right there. Y'all ready to give? Let's lift our offering to the Lord. We're going to make a declaration with this seed. You shall meet all of my needs. My giving is an act of my worship, my obedience, and my love to God. You shall use this seed to reach this community, this city, this county, this state, this country, and this world. Today I decree that every curse of my family is broken, every spell of my family is stopped, every disease of my family is healed because of the seed that I sow. Today I declare that I am blessed. I am blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Make it a little faster. Make it a little faster. I'm trading my shame. Yeah. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sorrow.
by the hand, we're going to give our benediction. No, I didn't want us to stop the music. They're just going to keep going. I'm training my sick Listen, Minister Ella needs to meet with the vendors for the businesses just for about five minutes in the green room after service. Also, don't forget about uh, the dates. If we got it up there, brothers, the dates for the parade, um, the float, um, doing the floats for the float for the parade. Um, make sure um, we come out for that. It's for those who signed up to come out and help decorate the float um, for the parade, it is some dates on there. Um, what are the dates, Sister Audrey? Um, what are the? Do we have the dates? So what? 11, 12th, and 14th. 11, 12th, and 14th. So let's keep that in mind too as well. And Tanya's going to meet with the um, teenagers on Wednesday night um, for dance for watch night service for those um, those or those are interested, those who want to be a part of that presentation. Play practice today will begin at 2.30, all right? Well, listen, let's grab our neighbors by the hand if you haven't already done so. Uh, what? Huh? Huh? Walter say pray for his new job. You're not going to have to be relocated, are you? Well, we're not praying for that. Okay, we're not praying for that. <laughs> we just pray for promotion of what you already know. Wait, who are you trying to work for? No Norwegian Airlines? Walt's trying to get a job with Norwegian Airlines. So y'all pray for him for that. Um, he'll be traveling back and forth to Norway. And um, so if he gets a job, back and forth from Fort Lauderdale to two weeks in, two weeks out, right? Something like that. So, okay, well, y'all pray for that. All right, listen, let's, let's bow our heads. We're going to pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you so much for what you've done in our lives today. There's a shift happening, and we thank you for that confirmation in our lives. We give your name glory, honor, and praise for what you're doing. Bless us now as we leave this place, but not your presence, and we'll give your name glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Make sure you give somebody a hug and let them know you love them in Jesus' name.